Okay. Well, I'll tell you what happened with Jane. I didn't know what to do for her. As I said, I had no experience. I had two cancer cures at that point, and both of those were old students of mine. And, you know, I used to make a living teaching people how to succeed in other things than curing, like making money and running their business and living their life and their relationships and so on. And, you know, so I was a success coach, and, you know, I uh, loved doing that. It was fun. I abruptly stopped when I discovered people could cure things because I wanted to put all my focus and energy into this. This became my passion, you know. And uh, still, you know, I sort of brought that over to this. And this was the mega, mega version of what I did then. Because this teaches real success in everything. Spiritual, emotional, and physical. And see, what she, you know, what Jane was doing was she was improving like drastically in the emotional and spiritual areas, but she, you know, she wasn't curing the cancer. Until, I'll tell you what happened. Jane really liked working her past lives. She was interested in what had happened to her back then, you know. And she wanted to take out all her past life trauma because you take it from life to life. I mean, she was accessing trauma that were like hundreds of years ago, you know. So she wanted to get that out, and she figured, maybe I'm going to die of this cancer. That was worrying me. See, I want to win. I don't, want to, I don't want somebody to say, well, I might die. I want you to say, oh, I'm going to cure this, you know. <laughs> and I know I can. But see, really back then, the truth was none of us knew that we could cure things. We didn't know, okay. It was just too new. I mean, I didn't, I barely knew I cured my herpes, you know. I mean, I was finding herpes in my higher bodies for about two years, 18 months maybe, you know, after I cured it. So I cured it, quote, unquote, but back it came, not in my physical body. I never had another outbreak because I tested that the herpes had to be in my spiral body for, you know, I can't remember now, but maybe it was like three days or something. And I, I used to get it back in my spiral body every time I went to sleep and other times. And I didn't know why. And Jane was getting the cancer back. She was taking it out of her non-physical bodies. And she was getting it back, you know, within an hour, you know, sometimes. We just, you know, boom, she'd check it and it'd be there again, you know. But see, she was going to, you know... When I say you're going to do it for the rest of your life, Jane was going to do this for the rest of her life whenever, wherever she needed to, as much as she needed to. She had taken the time off work. She was going to cure this. She, if she didn't cure it, she wasn't going back to work. She was on an indefinite sick leave. You know, All she did was focus on curing her cancer till it was going to be gone, and it wasn't gone, you know, it wasn't going, but she at least did the right thing, you know, she approached it the right way. So she was a good one, you know, she, I got a, I got a keeper there, she was great, it's too bad I lost touch with her, she was good, I, I lost touch with everybody, I had a lot, a lot of keepers, you know, Gil who cured liver cancer, if you looked over the cure shows, you see him in there, and I emailed them, you know, a couple of months ago, they were gone. I don't know, him and his wife, they, they were great. I was in touch with them for years after he cured that cancer. But then, you know, I just lose touch with people after a while. Anyway, I'll tell you what happened. So I was talking to Jane one day, and I said to her, take a couple of two-hour walks every day, you know. And she lived near a wildlife, uh, whatever it was, forest or something. And I said, T take a couple of walks. And, you know, do all the other things you're doing. She was discovering all these things that were wrong with her. Like, she discovered paradances, I think. And paradances aren't exactly something that's wrong with you. There's, there's something that you're in, you know. But I'm not going to get into that, okay? There's a lesson on paradances. You can go work the lesson. 
Okay, and find out if you're, you could test right now, am I in any para dances and see if you're in a para. You don't have to know what they're in, what they are to test if you're in any, <laughs> you know? You don't have to know anything about something to test for it, see? Because it's guidance. God will tell you yes or no, you know? You, you can get yes, no answers from God now, so. Um, so all right, so onward. So I said, okay. When you've done all that, just spend the rest of the two-hour walk taking out past life trauma since you're so interested in it. I didn't think it was going to do anything. Because for most people, and it still holds true for most people, past life trauma is not one of the causative factors of cancer generally. You know, you, you know with most people it's not. But with some people, obviously, it is. Because... A few days later, Jane called me back. She says, I think I cured my cancer. I said, really? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> you know, I was, <laughs> see what I mean? I, success fascinates me, you know. She said, well, she found, she found a, a past life trauma where somebody would stuck a hook in her right where the, tra- where the tumor was. And she said when she removed that trauma, she felt the most profound sense of peace and serenity that she ever felt in her life. And a few days later, she went back to the doctor for her next medical test. And sure enough, the numbers were better. The numbers had improved. And the doctor still wanted to do the mastectomy. And I said, you know, people have the most unfounded suspicions about doctors, how doctors want the money, you know. And they don't. Her doctor was worried about her. 50% 50% of doctors pray for their patients. 70% of doctors, by my test, are born healers. Doctors are intuitive. Doctors can tell you all kinds of important things. You do not want to get all negative about doctors. They are wonderful people, you know. But still, she had to say, no, I don't think so. You know, I'm going to keep going and see what I can do. Well, six weeks later, the tumor was gone. And Jane told me there was some pain involved, you know, that, you know, uh, it wasn't in unbearable pain, but th- there was pain in the tumor when, when it was dissolving. And also she did something with grapes, just for you guys who have cancer. Uh, I don't remember, it made grapes part of her diet, you know, or maybe grape fasted for a while or something. I don't remember exactly, but that's, I think that she saw that as a useful thing too. But the moral of the story was that a lesser person, see, this is the success formula. A lesser person would have said, I'm out of (laughs) here and gone off chasing the next cure. Jane chased the cure inside of herself. She didn't look for the next cure on the internet. She looked for the next cure in God. And, you know, and she methodically and carefully did the things that she knew to do And then she also did the things she was interested in. You see, a lesser person would have been gone. She wasn't curing the cancer, and she was going to do this for the rest of her life. She wasn't curing the cancer, and she was going to be calm and clear. Even if she wasn't curing the cancer, that was okay. She still wanted to know what was wrong with her. And that's the success formula. What's the success formula? You be an immuner. That's the success formula. That's an immuner. You, you know, that's the, that's the title of our CD, by the way. We do have one CD, and that's the title of it, Becoming an Immuner. Because you know what? She was a natural. I mean, Jane was a born immuner, okay? I wasn't. <laughs> Most of us aren't. We become immuners. So if you're not quite there yet, you know, keep plugging away, and you'll become an immuner, possibly. Maybe. Anyway, that's the, that's the success formula.